Hey everyone, welcome to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay. So grab a brush, grab some models, grab some paints, and paint along with me. It's pouring outside, as you can probably hear. Windows closed. That's crazy. That's nah, all good. So we're going to talk about life and love and the pursuit of happiness today. And uh, we're going to paint, I'm going to paint some Dark Angel Tactical Marines. I'm done with the Raven Wing. So now it's time to get on to the Tactical Marines, the Green Wing. And after that, I'll probably spend a week just, you know, fixing up my Terminators and then... Uh, Good to go. My Dark Angel army will be complete, and I'll start a next task. We'll see what it is. So yeah, grab a brush. Let's get started on this week's Painting with Jay, shall we? Hey everyone, so, how's it going? It is time to paint some Tactical Marines. So I have 23 Tactical Marines that I need to paint. So I'll zoom out and show you who that. 23 Tactical Marines. Yay, Tactical Marines. That'll be cool. Some green wing. We'll talk some green wing today and and stuff. And uh, yeah, you know I'm working on a couple other projects as well, but it's good. I'm done the. Um, I'm finally done my Raven Wing, and it feels good to be done the Raven Wing. You know, I just I was working on it for a while, and uh, now all good. So now it's time to get started on the green wing. And have some fun with that. So I'm just fixing something quickly while I'm talking to you all. So I've what I did was I went ahead and base coated and uh, did one shade of highlighting as well on some of the uh, some Dark Angels Tactical Marines. Obviously, 20 of them. So now today's episode, I'm just going to be taking Bile Tan Green. Uh, and shading him. I will be just doing some shading and getting some shading recesses. That's it. And then I'll do maybe a highlight if I have time for it. This one I just finished. So I'll move him to the, over here. And that's it. It's going to be a pretty, you know, nonchalant episode because, yeah, that's like, you know, it's just really getting stuff done, you know. And I'll probably be working on these guys for the next, I don't know, two, three, or four weeks. And then I'll spend a week fixing up my Terminators, and then my Dark Angels are pretty in good shape. And after that, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe some terrain, maybe another army. I'm thinking maybe, I have a, a couple big commissions that I've been doing, so maybe I'll just spend a month and just do commissions. And while I paint commissions, I can do painting with chase. You know, Oh, well, that's out of focus. Oops, I hit the focus button by accident. So we have much to talk about. First of all, if you're following sports, unfortunately, Blue Jays eliminated. So much happens in a week. Last week they were just about to play the Kansas City Royals. And they fought hard. It was a six-game series, and they lost. I'm still very proud of the Blue Jays. I would have thought it would have been awesome if they won, but uh, yeah, whatever. It happens. You know, only one team can win. They were a good team. And Kansas City's a good team, though, as well, so... That was cool. So, and unfortunately, I was hoping that if the Jays lost, the Cubs would win because then Back to the Future, because this was Back to the Future week, you know. Which I'll probably talk about that in a second as well. Um, so yeah, Blue Jays are gone, but it was a great season. As I said, they had a really good season. They brought baseball back to Toronto, and uh, can't wait for next year. I really can't. That's gonna be fun. This year's really winding down. Falls in the air. I've been filling up leaf bags. I was challenged recently, and I got to put up pictures of one of my viewers and friends, Mr. Dublet. He thinks he's going to outleaf me. Nobody outleafs Jay. I'm going to put out more leaves and leaf bags. I already put out about nine or ten bags, and I still have tons left. So, whenever it's not raining, I like to just put stuff. I like to do a bag or two or three a day. That way, it keeps me going, but I don't overwhelm. Like I don't, you know, wear myself out or anything. So, yeah, unfortunately, Cubs lost. And what, for those who don't know, um, in Back to the Future 2, they go 30 years into the future. And it was filmed in, it was supposed to take place in 1985. So they go to the year 2015. And in 2015, the Cubs win the World Series. And yesterday, coincidentally, the day that the Jays got eliminated was the 22nd anniversary of the day that Joe Carter hit the home run to win the World Series for the Jays. So it was kind of cool. But, uh, yeah. Cubs, unfortunately, didn't play so well. They got swept 
Uh, just the Mets are really a hot team right now, and uh, they won in four games. So, not much you can do there. So yeah, let's talk about Back to the Future. It was a lot of big celebrations this week about Back to the Future because it's Back to the Future Day. You know, it was really cool seeing some videos with Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd together again. Like they did Jimmy Kimmel, and they did a couple other videos together. And it was just interesting to think about, um, you know, because 1985, it was basically 1987's perception of what they thought would be the future. You know, they're flying cars, hoverboards, and all that stuff. Unfortunately, hoverboards aren't where they want to be, and flying cars are being worked on right now, of course. But um, it was cool. Some things they got right, you know, like the popularity of 3D video, 3D movies was in there, and some of the billboard stuff was there. And then there's some really interesting people. Like, there's a couple of YouTubers with very interesting conspiracy theories about um, the movie and how it predicted, like, 9-11 and stuff. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that, but it's it's interesting. Um, but yeah, it was really just cool to compare. Like I was, I was reading all these comparisons between what 1985 would ha think would exist in 2015 and what actually exists. And as far as computers go, you know, they couldn't even predict what would happen with computers. Oh yeah, other things they predicted like phones with cameras on them and you can instantly share pictures. You know, the rate of technology is crazily going, but it's, it's always interesting to see what they got right from you know, per prediction, because obviously the, the book 1984 didn't get much right. And uh, another thing that people are thinking is interesting because there were a bunch of futuristic movies at the time, in the, the mid to late 80s. But if you go like two years in the future, then all of a sudden it becomes like Running Man, and I'm really hoping it doesn't, the world doesn't fall to like what Running Man was about. You know? But, uh, that was really cool. As I said, it was really cool. Michael J. Fox, unfortunately, he's very far along with his Parkinson's. It's always unfortunate to see him in that state. But uh, he's living life, you know. He's living life. Uh, it's been a busy week. A lot of work. I've been able to put out some videos. You know, I apologize lately. As I said, I, I kind of, I, I did warn that this was happening. That the number of videos per week is going to slow down for a while. And unfortunately, it's really happening. Just, I been really busy really tired but um so obviously now it's time for a shameless promotion so as always if you uh, if you're really interested in supporting me uh either check out the warp link in the description below or uh consider supporting my patreon campaign which is going towards the free videos and like next week the there's going to be a free painting tutorial for them and then a couple weeks later it'll come out for you guys and uh yeah So it's, you know, that's cool. Number four, done. Man. But time continues, you know? Time continues. I'm gonna keep working hard. I just, uh, I haven't had a lot of time in the last few weeks to put out videos. Really haven't. Even the warp is slightly suffering, but I'm keeping relatively on top of it. They get, you know, four or five videos a week. This week's painting tutorial on the warp is a cool model from the Kador. I haven't done any Kador painting tutorials yet for War Machine, uh, for the warp. I did, you know, a Kador Conquest years ago because it was Matt's Conquest for Mini Wargaming. A uh, model I painted up for him, and I don't think he ever used again, or if he used it, I think he used it like three times in battle reports, then kind of gave up on, on, um, on War Machine after that. He wasn't really into War Machine. So this is a Grey Lord Escort, a Grey Lord Escort, and he's right here. So this is him all painted up. I really like the staff, you know, his cape, good stuff there. So it was a lot of fun to paint up. So go check out the warp if you want to go see him. And uh, yeah, you know, what else is new? I'm preparing, I'm trying to prepare a list for... A tournament that's coming up in Peterborough called Brawl in the Hall. It's in a few weeks. I'll be going for sure. And to be honest, and I know some people will watch this and see it, I'm going to bring Imperial Knights. And I know that people are already calling like shenanigans on me or something, probably from internet land. But here's the thing. I really want to play Imperial Knights. I don't get a chance to play Imperial Knights very often. 
and uh, because in battle reports, it's not a really battle report worthy army in the sense that your opponent needs to know ahead of time that you're bringing Imperial Knights, and then they have to, like they're, they're going to have to list Taylor because otherwise you get a situation where you're just going to walk all over your opponent. The only problem is though, if your opponent has the exact answer to Imperial Knights and they know you're bringing Imperial Knights and then they perfectly list Taylor, it won't be fun either because then you just get trounced. But. So, I really haven't had a chance much. To, I haven't even been able to play the new codex yet, which there aren't that many new rules or anything. There's like, you know, new formations with rules and stuff. And, uh, yeah, so I really want to do that. And I figured no better place than a tournament where people are going to bring competitive lists like Ravenwing will be there. And, uh, what else? Yeah, just some really competitive lists will be there. A lot of Eldar, probably, a lot of Dark Eldar. And I figure Imperial Knights at a tournament scene won't be as crazy because if everyone else is playing competitive lists, in fact, I might even lose all my games if, if people have a lot of answers to them, right? So, I'm going to play it. I am going to play it. Now, the question is how many knights? I really want to get a fifth knight in the near future and paint it up and um, I would do a five night, five night army whatever that is when there's the uh, high high king court or whatever it's called there's the baronial court but uh, yeah I, I would like to do that high princeps court or something like that because then you have five knights all five are characters which could be fun uh, they're all characters. They all have access to the upgrades. But of course, with at like 1850, you really can't get that many points in upgrades because your knights are so expensive. Um, but it'd be kind of fun. I like to bring an an 1850 list with five models, and just have a good game. And that way, I also ensures that uh, you actually get to play. Because at the brawl in the hall with the doubles, it was 2,000 points. Because it was it was um, or no, it wasn't 2,000 points. It was 1250 each, so it was 2,500 points. I remember correctly and we barely got like two turns in and then there were some psychic heavy armies that like a one turn wait you know the psychic phase alone wasted half the turn game so at least with imperial knights it would be a relatively fast game at least for me and it'll be i'll get some turns in when it's peach big in georgia yeah so that'd be good so I'm going to do it. As I said, it's a competitive environment. I already know some people are going to bring some lists that are going to trounce mine. So I'm not too worried. You know, I'm not going to go to win. Like, I don't want to go there just to trounce people, but I want to have a good time. I just don't want to be that guy who makes people not have fun. You know? And as you guys know, I'm not... And girls, obviously. But as you people know, I'm not the most competitive individual. I play relatively middle ground lists. And... Uh, It'd just be fun to play Imperial Knights for once. You know, I get three games of Imperial Knights in. And if they all die, they all die. It'd just be a fun game. You know? If I run up against, like, Dark Eldar or, I don't know, Ravenwing. Ravenwing have become very much the tournament scene as well since they came out. And I called that because they're the greatest thing in the Codex by far. Bar none in the Dark Angels Codex. By the way, speaking of Dark Angels, I was playing in a battle report the other day, and this one will be out shortly because I want to put in a little bit of an advertisement in it, so, um, for the tournament that I'm going to, Brawl in the Hall. But, um, it'll probably be Tuesday. But, uh, my opponent brought Dark Angels. It was, it was Dave, my normal battle report opponent, one of my normal battle report opponents, like with Stu and Dave and Trevor. And, um, Dave and I were talking about, because he brought Deathwing. So we were going to have fun, play a good game with Deathwing and stuff. And he, he was like, you know, Jay, they have the twin-linked special rule when they deep strike. And I was like, what? Because I don't remember them having that rule. And I did my codex review. And no one, I don't remember getting called on that. And I was like, I don't remember that rule. I thought they lost it. And I was really upset that they lost it. And he showed me it. It's under the term, the Terminator armor. It's a really weird part of the Codex. It's in the Terminator armor section of the Codex. Rather than the Deathwing situation, right? Or the Deathwing Assault special rule. But then, 
I was like, how did I miss... Now, I do miss rules occasionally. Like, my, my codex reviews aren't perfect, but I do read the codex several times over before doing these reviews. And I thought to myself, how did I miss something like that? Because that's huge, right? It turns out, and I'm, I'm putting my name on this, because I've trip, like quintuple-checked my codex. It's not in the interactive codices. GW made a mistake... And in the interactive codex, which is the one I have, the the uh, i like the iPad interactive one, if you go under Terminator armor, it just goes over the rules of like deep striking and you know bulky, relentless, all that kind of stuff, and does not go over what's it called? I don't even remember what it's called. Vengeful strike, I think, is the word. So that's why I screwed up in my codex review was because it wasn't in my codex, and that's really weird. GW, you know, obviously GW makes mistakes, and I defend GW because I think they're a good company in, in a lot of ways, but um, I'm a little disappointed that sudden, something so huge was a big discrepancy between editions of the Codex. So it turns out if you have the ebook version, the ebook is just like a hard, is just an e copy of the, um, of the hard copy. So it's the same as that because it's just a scan, but the, the interactive version doesn't have that rule. So, it wasn't my fault in this case. And it really annoyed me that I've been playing... I've played Dark Angels a bunch of times. And I didn't know that they had the Twin Link special rule. So... But it happens. So that's good. That adds another feather in Dark Angel's cap. Um, still, Deathwing aren't anywhere near as strong as Ravenwing. Ravenwing are, are just taken over everywhere because of their resilience and survivability. Unless your opponent has an answer, like uh, Triple Vindicator list, something that has ignored cover and really crazy, like the you know, Triple Vindicator drops the Apocalyptic Blast, Strength 10, AP2, Norris Cover. Um... Ravenwing will survive, and I've played against Ravenwing, and I've used Ravenwing a bunch of times. I really should do, like, a Codex review months later kind of thing. Or Codex review revisited. But uh, I was kind of right with my Codex review. I really don't think I was that different, other than, you know, I made a mistake with the Dark Angel, the Deathwing, because I didn't know about it, because it wasn't my Codex. But Ravenwing are very strong and resilient. The Codex is very defensive. It's a very defensive army you know they're survivable not that hard hitting close combat uh, the raven wing but uh, oh my goodness are they survivable and they are really frustrating to your opponent when you just jink and you have that 4 up re-rollable or 3 up re-rollable and it's pretty hard to deny it there's very few AP3 flamers or you know AP2 large blast that ignore cover, so they tend to survive for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... That was interesting. Uh, the more I play Dark Angels, I, as I kind of concluded, Dark Angels, um, Green Wing is, in my opinion, weaker than Vanilla Marines because just the rules and the lack of, of choices. Like when you take the Demi Company, you have no choices. You got to take three attack squads, an assault squad, and a Devastator squad. And I really want to get some Devastator Centurions. But I tried a bike squad recently instead of the Assault when I was playing Vanilla Marines. I really liked it. And you just can't do it, unfortunately, with uh, with Deathwing, right? Or Dark Angels, because those are Raven. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. What else? New Tau stuff. And there was a rumor at one point that there's new, no new Tau Codex, but I'm pretty sure it will be out. It's early Saturday morning. But I'm pretty sure it should be announced today at some point. 
Yeah, we'll check it in a second and see if it was released or announced. But there should be a new Tau Codex, and I'll do, of course, a Codex review on it when it comes out. Because the Tau deserve a new Codex, you know, and as I said, I'm really hoping that the new Codex brings in some firepower and changes the rules to make them a more interesting book. You know? Let me just check my app quickly and see if they've announced the release. Yep, I think it just put up. Let's see. Contra, Contra, Contra. Yep, there it is. New Tau Codex for next week. Or is it Koyan? I don't know. Interesting. Now Tau Empire. 59.50. But it looks like the same Codex. I'm confused about that. It's an update expansion to the currently existing codex. Oh, so just an expansion. Oh, so it's just the Koyan. Yeah, it is the same codex. Oh, that sucks. Okay, never mind. So it's just an update, like a 7th edition update. That's kind of weird. I'm surprised by that. Because every other codex from 6th edition has gotten updated, like, uh, you know, Eldar got a 7th edition codex. Space Marines got a 7th edition codex. Dark Angels. And hopefully soon, um, Chaos Space Marines. Because they really need a new codex as well. They really do. Of course, Adeptus Auroritas need one. Will they ever get one? We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> oh no, that's good. I think I'm gonna finish this step today. I thought it was gonna take me the whole time, but I've, we're at 23 or four minutes into this video now, and I'm well on my way. I finished mm, 13 so far, so I have 10 left. Next one. Yeah. <laughs> What else happened recently? Uh, there was an election. Yep. Oh, let me see what, just quickly. What else was new? So it's a Tau update. It's really weird. So it's, it's, it's as people predicted, there's no Tau new codex. No, it's not a 7th edition codex. It's an updated 6th edition codex with all the new models and the Ghost Keen and whatever that other... Um, the new book, Koyan one. With the the Tau versus the um, Space Marines, the Raven Guard. Interesting. I'm a little disappointed by that. I figured Tau would, should get a new complete seventh edition. Maybe it'll have like seventh edition new like formations and rules, which will update it. You know. Unfortunately, that doesn't that means probably it won't be that many points cost changes, or if any, to like Fire Warriors or anything like that. So. That means there won't be that much change. <laughs> Next one. So, that's interesting. Maybe I shouldn't get the ebook or the interactive version. <laughs> Maybe I should just stick with the ebook version. Because they might forget a rule. As I said, that's just a really 
weird rule to forget because that's a major rule. Like when they deep strike in and Deathwing have to deep strike in. So that, that really does affect the game, not having Twin Linked. In one version, Twin Linked in another. And as I said, I'm continuing using just Bile Tan Green and applying some shade into the recesses of the model. The reason why I'm post shading, it's, as it's called, is I used an airbrush to base coat the model and give a, a bit of a gradient of color. Yeah, as I said, in the end, you know what? Green wing isn't bad. They're just nothing really special because the vanilla marines have so much more versatility. Um, for green. But the Deathwing, you know what, they, they're they not as, they're not amazing. I knew they got hit with the nerve hammer really hard when they, um, when the new Codex came out in a few ways. Uh, the biggest one is obviously they can't start on the table and they can't come in turn one. So obviously the uh, the new book is a lot about synergy. So other lists, uh, most of the lists I've seen are either synergetic or pure Ravenwing <laughs> because if your entire army has like scout uh, most of them have skilled rider not all but some of them have skilled rider you know they're all fast buggers it's a uh, really hard thing to deal with and all of them have re-rollable jinx so <laughs> I hope eventually they FAQ it obviously they still haven't FAQ'd the Sam Ale issue with that because uh, for the dark the, the Ravenwing detachment you can take up to like a few HQs but they have to have the death the Ravenwing special rule and there's only one HQ in the book that has the Ravenwing special rule so you can only take Samuel you can't take a librarian or a chaplain on a bike or anything like that which is obviously a mistake because otherwise why would they give you more options so let's see what's for pre-order today uh, let's see all these pre-orders Codex is updated and expanded. Revised and updated edition packed full of r rules for the new models and more besides. All right, the new Hunter Contingent Force organization. There we go. So the Hunter Contingent Force organization. So they will have a new detachment, I'm guessing. While a plethora of new formations make it easier than ever to theme your force. Excellent. So they are getting us. It's a 7th edition codex. It really is a 7th edition codex. That's good. So I'll definitely do a codex review on that next week. Yeah. Next week is almost Halloween. I might wear... I gotta do a Q&J as well. I gotta wear my... I like my costume from last year. My, uh, my Star Lord. Costume. But, uh, alright, that's good. So new codex. New formations, new everything. That's that's what Tau need. That's what Tau needs. So, so I'll definitely do an in-depth review on the new Tau Codex next Friday. That'll make me happy. Or Saturday. We'll see. Another one done. A couple of them are missing their hands. I know where their hands are. I just got to find... Well, I, I know approximately where they are. I just got to find them and put them back on. So, yeah, in Canada, had an election. We had a big election this week. It's been an interesting week. So, yeah, Jay's lost, unfortunately. But I'm going to buy a shirt. I really got to buy a jersey. I want to buy a jersey. And, uh... I'm tired. Sorry. It's been a long week. Just having one of those weeks, you know. I guess when the cold weather kicks in, but I'm so I'm just tired this week. I'm really sore. Hmm. It happens. You know. I'm not in a bad mood or anything. I'm in a good mood relatively. I'm just tired and sore. 
I could also keep injuring my back, and that's been really affecting my painting time, which has slowed down my, my painting tutorials this week, I found, is that I couldn't sit down for long periods of time to do my... Like, even this, I, I just took a, uh, a knockoff Robaxa set. The Selection brand. Before starting here, because it's already my back is... I'm feeling it right now. It's starting to kick in, but uh, it hurts. Uh, so what else? Yeah, we had an election, and I should talk about this. So, uh, Canada's going to change. That's the big thing. The, um, the current government was called conservative, and they got their butt kicked. Um, they lost a lot of seats this election, and the liberals actually won a majority. Now, everyone predicted a minority, and in the end, it was actually because the Maritimes uh, went a certain way that wasn't really expected. Uh, the Maritimes voted a lot of NDP, and some liberal and stuff, but uh, they went all liberal. And they because of the, the surprise Maritimes, all of a sudden, the liberals swept. So it's a majority government. Um, and uh, it's interesting. So we'll see what happens, obviously. So Canada's going to be in for the next four years of change. Uh, a lot of spending. The liberals really like to spend. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. We'll see. I guess we don't want, you know... We'll find out in four years, we'll look back and be like, oh, maybe, you know, electing Justin Trudeau was a good thing, or maybe electing Justin Trudeau wasn't a, the best thing. It ended up being the guy, for those of the Americans or people who, you know, don't follow Canadian politics. Uh, oh, I gotta remind myself to talk about that as well. Cool, just making sure the magnets are done. I was doing some magnetizing earlier. Um... Uh, yeah, so we'll see. You know, as I said, it'll, uh, so what happened was they elected Justin Trudeau. Now Justin Trudeau is the son of Canada's probably favorite prime minister of all time, Justin Trude uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau. You know, Pierre was in in power for like sixteen years. I'm pretty sure. He was a very popular, uh, and uh, yeah, just kind of like George Bush, George W. Bush, but not really. I'd say very, uh, very different. It's still a father and son dynamic, but uh, Bush between Bushes, it was like eight years, right? Because it was just Clinton. Um, but this was, you know, many years. Trudeau, uh, Pierre's dead, and he, didn't, you know, he lost power in 1984. I'm pretty sure. So it's been, you know, 20, 30 years, 30 years since he rose to power. But, uh, so Justin Trudeau has always been in the public eye, you know, and, uh, there's a lot of funny videos of Justin Trudeau. So if you're ever bored and you want old, watch, watch old videos of our current prime minister, because he's done a lot of silly things in his life. Like he used to, there's a really good interview and it, it seems like a joke, but it's not. This was actually covered on... I, I knew about this interview a long time ago. But uh, John Oliver actually covered it on a show. There's an interview where Justin Trudeau explains his favorite party joke that he does on his guests. And his favorite party joke at his old place was to fall down the stairs. So he'd be like, oh, how's it going, Dave? Oh, yeah. Wah, wah, wah! And then fall down the stairs. And he, like, threw himself down the stairs. And that was his favorite party joke to do to people. And so you can currently watch, you can watch a video of the current, or the, the next, because he hasn't been sworn in yet, because the election just happened, but the next Prime Minister of Canada, um, the next Prime Minister of Canada falling down the stairs. You know, it was pretty funny. So, yeah, I don't really get into too much into politics. I'm not going to go that, you know, which side I fall on or whatever. But we'll see. You know what? That's thing. It's time for a change. And this happens frequently. You know, there's cycles. Like, if you look at Canadian politics, it usually cycles about 10 years or 8 to 10 years of each group. So it went liberals for many years and then conservatives for many years and then back to liberals. Just like in the States, you know, it's currently a Democrat for two terms. Before that was a... Um, a Republican for two terms. Before that was a Democrat for two terms. Before that was a Republican. You know, it just cycles because you get you have the same thing, and then people want change, and you know, yeah.
So we'll see. What else? Uh, hockey. Let's talk hockey for a second. Maple Leafs, not so good. Montreal Canadiens, really good. Montreal Canadiens haven't lost a game yet, so they're, they're like 8 or 9 and 0. Oh. And they need the Leafs have won one game. So they're not really a good team. And it really sucks that I really want to go see an NHL game. I haven't seen an NHL game in a while. But um, I haven't seen an NHL game in a while, as I said. And I want to go see the Leafs. So I was looking up, like, secondhand tickets for the Leafs. And oh my goodness, they're so stupidly expensive. For a team that sucks, they're so expensive. They're like, cheapest t tickets are like 100 bucks for the nosebleed section. For a team that will win one in, you know, pro it's estimated they're going to win probably one in every eight games this season. They suck. It's a rebuilding stage of suckiness. And uh, so I decided is I'm, I'm two hours away from Toronto where I live. But I'm only about two and a half hours away from Ottawa. I'm basically in between them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go see some Ottawa Senators games. Because the cheapest seats for their games, and they have a good, like, the, for 100 bucks, you can get really good seats that are available. And for the cheapest seats are like 25, 30 bucks. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to drive for a couple hours, go see an afternoon game. Have a good time. You know? And then, yeah, I'll come back. It'll all be good. Mm -hmm. So that'll be cool. I'm going to do that. One of my goals this winter, to go see a uh, an Ottawa Senators game. Maybe I'll go see, and maybe I'll see if they have a good team like the Penguins come in, or not saying they're a terrible team or anything, but I want to, I really want to see like the Penguins or Oilers, that'd be cool. Now that we're done, so we're done. Okay, I didn't predict that I would only take me 35 minutes. Uh, I'm probably gonna go for another 10, so I'm gonna cut it a little short today, because listen, my back is just shot. But uh, let's keep going. What do I want to do now? Um, I could start on the edge highlight, or work on the center parts. I'll work on the centerpiece, the chess pieces. Yeah, you know what? I'll work on the chess pieces. So let's get some Shabti Bone in our palette and keep going. Hmm. Gotta find my Shabti Bone. I thought I had it. No, but that's in dust. Shabti Bone. palette. That's good. Look at that. I have that stuff done. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to these guys being done, and I can start my next guys. I really should have had them done a long time ago, but I didn't play a lot of Greenwing. When I, you know, I'm a Deathwing player when I play uh, Dark Angels, so maybe I'll try to get in some, death, some Greenwing battle reports where I'm playing like 50 Greenwing Horde Space Marines. They're kind of fun. Yeah. A bunch of vehicles for free. That'd be cool. All right, switch brushes. Let's paint some chest symbols. Today's episode will be about change. You know, back to Future Day. Oh, a couple things happened. Weird things ha happening during the Jays game. It was really weird and kind of disrespectful in a few ways, I guess. But uh, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe we're reading too much into it. But so many weird things happened during yesterday's game. Like at one point in the eighth inning, seventh inning, or eighth inning, um, Fox Sports put up a an advertisement for the World Series. And though they ended up being right, it was really weird to put up an advertisement for the teams in the World Series. It was like, next week, World Series, Mets face the, um, Mets face the Royals. And people were like, uh, the, the game's not over, dudes. 
why are you why are you advertising the teams? You know, it, it doesn't make much sense to to advertise the um, next week when this week hasn't been determined. So, and they later apologized and said it was just some weird error. But uh, Twitter was lighting up about it. And then there was, of course, this home run that really wasn't a home run in my opinion, but most Canadians would agree it was a fan interference. But it's over. It happened. You know, I'm not too upset. I'm going to move on. I was, I'm was. i really proud of the Jays this year, as I said. I am very proud of the Jays. And uh, oh, can't wait for next year. Halloween's in the air. Let's talk about Halloween. Yeah, because this is my last... Oh, well, there should be another painting with Jay before Halloween. Hopefully, if I can get this done before Halloween. Because Halloween, I think, is next Saturday. Today's the 24th. Yeah, maybe I'll go... I don't know if, if I'm handing out candy yet. I should. I really like to hand out candy to people. We didn't get a lot of people last year, though. So... And always, whenever I buy the Halloween candy, I end up eating it before Halloween. Yeah. So right now, I'm just, I'm just applying a shabby bone. I really should be looking out for purity seals as well. I'm going to go back on the previous three and look for purity seals, because I can easily base coat the purity seals at the same time. Oh, green wing. Nope, no purity seals. This one has one. Yep. So, just paint the brown areas. And I'll differentiate them because the uh, purity seals will get a, an Agrax Earth shade. And the symbols will get a Seraphim Sepia shade. Cool. Done. Miserable day out today. Just raining. And as long as I'm not snowing, I'm okay. I don't really want snow yet. No. I don't want to put away my motorcycle yet for the year. That would not be cool. There we go. Another one done. Nice. There any more movies? Oh, movies. Star Wars. That's what I could talk about. So they just, uh, this week was really cool how, um, this week the, you could pre, I didn't, I didn't do this because I don't know where I'll be on that date, but, uh, starting this week, like, you could pre-order tickets for Star Wars for opening day, and they sold out in a lot of areas, oh, like, within a day can't believe the new Star Wars movie's coming out. I think it's going to be good. I really think it's going to be good. It looks good. The uh, the trailers look really good. I think there's a good team of people behind it. And um, they can do anything they want, right? And that's so much more powerful than the, um, the prequels. The problem is with the prequels, A, Jar Jar. So as long as there's no Jar Jar... You know, I think everyone will be happy. And as long as it's not a, a replacement for Jar Jar. You know, we don't need a new annoying racial stereotype character. So as long as it's not one of those, 
uh, seems like a good director and producers are behind the film. And as I said, uh, the prequels, they had to fulfill, you know, they, they weren't free to do whatever they want. You knew what was going to happen. Anakin was, you know, going to become Vader. And they just, it was the quest, the journey from A to B. And you already knew what B was, so you kind of see what was coming. But in this one, they can do whatever they want, right? And it's in the future. And it just, I think it'll be really, technically a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but... You know, I think it's going to be a really, I think it's going to be good. So, I'm excited to see that. I still haven't seen Jurassic World, but it's finally coming out on, on DVD, so I'll go see it. I'll rent, uh, not really rent it. Maybe I'll rent it on DirecTV or something. Wait till it comes, goes on Netflix. Seals. Yep, one right there. Um, I, I'm lo really looking forward to it. New lightsaber looks cool. Um, for some reason, people were like upset that there was a black Jedi. I have no idea why. I don't see it as a racial thing at all, so that was really weird. But uh, whatever, people can be. People are weird. Weird thing, I got a, in the mail the other day, um, the Metro, like the, one of the big grocery stores in Ontario is called Metro. It's a French-Canadian company. And uh, Metro. And uh, Metro, they're doing this weird knife and fork giveaway right now. It's kind of weird. So whenever you go to Metro, they're like, are you collecting the knives and forks? And you're like, no. But I, I've been kind of collecting them. I really wanted this, this cheese knife set. But all of a sudden... On Monday or Tuesday, I got in the mail a coupon for a free cutlery set. I was like, oh, cool, from Metro. And I was like, you know you're getting old when all of a sudden the highlight of your day is that you get a free cutlery set coupon in the mail. Unexpectedly. And you're like, oh, free cutlery set. All right, cutlery. You know, sign of getting old. This guy, I'm probably gonna call it. My back's not nowhere near feeling good right now, so. But, uh. I got some stuff done today. This is good. I got the, the shading done. Now I'm. I'm halfway, basically halfway through the guys going with the, um. The Agrax Earth Shade. Not Agrax Earth Shade, the Ushevdi Bone. And yeah, I can't, it'll be nice to have these, these guys all done and looking good, so. Mm -hmm. It's time to give some love to Dark Angels for a month or two. They really deserve it. So this year, I did Orktober last year. Last year was Orktober. I should have been Darktober. I should continue. I should have called it Darktober for Dark Angel Tober. Cool. He's done. So, you know what, I'm gonna call it now. I'm just, I'm not, let's say my back's a little shot, and uh, I'm out of paint anyway. I, and uh, we're at 50 minutes. So let's end now. So that concludes another Painting with Jay. I really hope you enjoyed it. Sorry for cutting a little short, but we're still about 50 minutes. That's a good amount of time for Painting with Jay. Mm -hmm. So I got some stuff done. My Dark Angel Tactical Marines are well on their way. I really hope you got as much done today as I did, and uh, you're enjoying painting and getting stuff done too. It's all awesome stuff. And uh, stay tuned for next week. I'll probably talk about Halloween and all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully it's not raining that day. Mm -hmm. And as always, if you want to support my videos, please go check out the Warp. Link in the description below. Or my Patreon campaign where funds from that will be going towards getting better equipment, better tables, and uh, more videos. Yeah. So, thank you as always for watching. Until next time, this is Jay saying happy painting. With me.